Hi, I'm Declan. Hi, I'm Tash. Hi, I'm Josh. And today we'll be talking about revision tips. Am I? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> revision can be scary, but how can making a plan help? Well, it definitely helps you to see like how much you have to do. By breaking it down, it makes it look a lot less intimidating than if you just go, I need to revise everything. And I think it's important to remember that everybody's different. So some people like to work throughout the day and schedule it. And for some people, it's just getting that through that first half an hour. So how do you use different revision tools such as mind maps or flashcards? Um, using mind maps is really useful. You can put all of the information from a subject and lay it out on the page in all sorts of different colours. And it really makes sense just to look at at a glance. So to start making those, you could perhaps look in a revision guide that you've bought for your exam board or look in textbooks or your exercise books or ask teachers for PowerPoints that they might have used in lessons just to give you a head start into making a mind map. With mind maps as well, it's not just sitting down with a textbook. You can also test yourself with it. You can say, OK, I'm picking this topic of this subject and I'm going to write as much as I can about it. Lots of different branches about each individual bit, like all the equations you have to remember. Um, that really helps. And you can colour code it all to make it look really pretty. And you mentioned flashcards as well. So can you speak a bit about how you use those? I can just get my mum or a friend or go through them myself. Being able to answer that and being able to recall that information just really gives you more confidence going into that exam hall. And what about past papers? There's only so many questions that they can ask you in an exam. Like, they're going to phrase it differently, maybe use different values for it, but at the end of the day, they're asking you a set of questions from a set list. So by doing past papers, not only do you get used to the style of question, how to answer them, how to get the marks, but likelihood is if you do enough past papers, the same question is going to come up in your exam. Yeah, definitely. Um, when you're looking at past papers, you really need to pay attention to the command words in them. Comment on, evaluate, describe, explain, that sort of thing. And if you just search exam command words on the internet, then you'll find all sorts of um, like descriptions of what they all mean and what the examiner is looking for. There's nothing worse than answering a question how you think is perfect, but then you read over it or the examiner reads over it and thinks they've not answered what I wanted them to. And for those people who don't necessarily enjoy or aren't very good at sitting down and writing or making flashcards, is there anything else they can do? Ask your teachers definitely because um, some schools may have subscribed to a service which allows you to have podcasts which are tailored to your exam board and to your subject and if you're an audio learner like I am then that can really help too. Um, well. I have dyslexia, so sitting down and writing and reading has never really been my forte. So I really like watching YouTube videos and I'll just watch it. And if like it says something and it says you need to remember this, I'll make a quick flashcard of it. So it's not just sitting down and doing one thing. And are there any resources that you use to help you plan? I use spreadsheets. It's really good because you can colour code them and they're very easy to change. Um, you can also download revision planner templates and mind map and flashcard examples from the BBC Mindset page. So revision can be stressful, but it's important to look after yourself. So do you have any tips? When you take time away from your revision and you've spent hours and hours during the day revising, it's scientifically proven that if you come away from the revision, then it has time to bed into your brain. And maybe if you went for a run or something or walked the dog or went swimming or something like that, then you'd have time to both distract yourself and also digest the information because you can't spend nine, ten hours a day revising solidly. You've got to have some time away so that your brain can actually do something with the information you've just put in it. You can't go on for that long without any you time. Sort of rewarding yourself, saying like, if I get this done today, then I will go out with a friend tomorrow. Or if I get this done today, then I'll read a book. Some of those rewards can actually be counted as revision, I think. So I watched Horrible Histories as my sort of like reward, but I counted it as history revision. And then if you're reading a book, it's going to improve like your reading and writing skills for English. So what do you do when you feel like it's a bit too much and you feel a bit stressed? I normally go to my friends just because they're in the same boat as me and they thought that test went really badly too and they don't get this topic either. So going and talking to them actually really calms me down because then we can sort of approach the problems together. 
Um, you can also talk to teachers about it because, of course, if you're struggling with a specific topic, then they can help you with that. And Childline are always there to listen if you need to talk to them as well. Thank you so much for coming in today to talk to us about revision tips. No problem. Thanks for having us. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.